I'm going to teach y'all about the interrelationship of the diaphragm, pelvic floor, and abdominals, and why it's so important that they work as a coordinated system. Let's use a balloon to illustrate the anatomy. So on top, we have the diaphragm. Throughout the midsection are the abdominals. And of course, underneath we have the pelvic floor. Now, the diaphragm is always working with a natural, just inherent contraction and relaxation. We breathe all day, every day. This up and down motion should be present also in the pelvic floor. With an inhale, the diaphragm contracts, flattens out, so should the pelvic floor. With an exhale, the diaphragm naturally domes up again and the pelvic floor should lift from underneath too. There should be a synchronous up and down motion between the two components. I'm gonna call this piston theory. So a piston moving up and down as the diaphragm drives the up and down motion of the intra-abdominal cavity. So we can see that it's important that all three of these team members work together. If any one of these team members is not functioning properly, that's when we get dysfunctions and symptoms such as prolapse, incontinence, painful sex. Let's look at a couple examples, again, using the balloon. So say I'm working with a woman who has really trained her abdominals, she's motivated and <clears throat> get some really firm abdominals going in the midsection. Look at what happens to the pelvic floor. More pressure going downward that could result in symptoms such as incontinence, prolapse, with a more pressure, possibly more lax and decreased strength in the pelvic floor. Another example, let's look at posture postpartum. So our rib cage becomes way tipped back. And we know we lose our breath at the end of pregnancy. That's because the diaphragm just can't descend and we can't take in as much air. So with the diaphragm hanging up here postpartum and you change to a more chest breather, then maybe the pelvic floor has to hypertone to add stability to your whole core. That could be symptoms of incontinence or painful sex. So the takeaway is that we want a balanced system of the piston. We want each part doing performing its own function, its own job, and not working too hard or too little. And we want the timing of all three of these components, diaphragm, abdominals, and pelvic floor, to be working as a coordinated team also.